multiple sclerosis in 2004 at the age of just 16. 100,000 people in the UK have the condition and it affects each sufferer differently. Edith faces difficulty walking and ha also has fatigue, but she's so far managed to maintain her independence. She lives alone, she works full-time as an accountant, with carers coming in to help her each morning and each evening. However, in April, she received a letter saying her care provider could no longer continue sending carers to her home and now Hertfordshire County Council, who are responsible for her care, have said she may have to go into a care home. Well, let's talk now to Edith and also from the MS Society. Freddie Cavender Atwood is also with us. Thank you both for coming in. And Edith, thank you for making the journey in today. I can imagine that in itself is quite a challenge for you to, to get up and get down into London to talk to us. Yeah, well, luckily this week I still have care. So my carer was at my house this morning at seven to help me get up and help me get here on time. But without that, I wouldn't be able to get out of bed. Take us back to when you were 16, because I know that diagnosis of multiple sclerosis can be so difficult because there are so many different symptoms. What symptoms were you facing when you were 16? Um, it was at the time of doing my GCSEs. I, uh, I lost sensitivity in my legs initially, and then um, I experienced what I now know is neuropathic pain, but it was kind of stinging down my arms and neck. Um, and then that continued. And then I had weakness in my leg and I was falling over. And that kind of all happened over the course of like the summer of my GCSEs, really. And so how quickly did your condition deteriorate? Because once again, with MS, it can differ from person to person, can't it? Yeah, I think... Um, Following my diagnosis, I had quite a few level years and then in my mid-twenties is when it started deteriorating again and I was not able to walk and started using a wheelchair. And so how long have you had carers coming in to your house to enable you to live dependently, work full time and have a, a normal life if you, if you like? It's been about a year and a half, and before that, I because I couldn't live independently anymore, I moved back home to live with my parents who helped me, and then it took quite a while to find my own flat, to have it adapted, to get the home care established, and that was quite a difficult process. And it's been running smoothly for about 18 months, and now I'm here again. And then a bolt out of the blue, that letter from the council. Yeah, I knew, I knew my care agency were having staff difficulties and shortages, um, but they gave three months notice and my social worker assured me that that was long enough and it would all be fine and I didn't need to worry. And it's only in the last few weeks, really, that it's escalated because they haven't found anyone new. So this isn't about funding, this is about simply not having somebody available to come yeah. and help you? Yeah, so social services have actually offered um, to give me direct payments to fund my own care. So the funding is there, but the, the carers aren't. It's like the money is no use to me when I'm bed bound and I can't find carers. That's, that's not the problem. And some people watching this may say, well, could you, for example, pay somebody you know? Does it have to be someone who is a carer or could it just be somebody that can assist you in the morning? What sort of help do you need? Um, I mean, it, it should be a carer really because my friends and family have jobs and lives, lives of their own. <laughs> like, of they're not there just to help me. Um, and it it's kind of weird having a friend or a family as a carer, like it, it blurs lines and roles really. How worried are you that you might end up in living in a care home? Uh, well, when that was mentioned to me, it, it did really shock and upset me. Um, it's not something I'd considered was even an option before. And to be honest, I just, I've been really stressed and scared and upset, but like now I'm just really, really tired I, and I don't know what's happening and I just feel like it's so beyond my control now. I'm just exhausted. 
course. And for people who don't understand multiple sclerosis, stress is one of the worst things. It can, it can trigger so much within yeah. the condition, can't it? So it's the last thing you need. Yeah. Freddie, it's so painful listening to this story because so often we will talk to people and it'll be down to money. In this occasion, it's not down to money. This is down to people being available to help Edith. How, how often do you hear these kind of stories? Well, sadly, Edith's story isn't an isolated incident, like you say. We hear this a lot from people with MS all across the country. Um, we know that one in three people with MS aren't getting the care they need with the essential basics, like getting up in the morning, getting washed and dressed and eating. Um, and it, it isn't good enough. Um, as you say, it's not all about funding, but social care has been massively underfunded for years, and that is fueling um, lots of issues around shortages of care workers, care providers pulling out of contracts, and ultimately over one million people not getting the support that they need across the country. The problem here is, if you had to go into a care home, which clearly you don't want to, they're not geared up for a 30-year-old woman. No. And I don't know where it would be. I don't, I don't know what the life would be like in that situation um, that was kind of thrown at me but it's not had any detail either I don't think there are that many beds available in care homes I've got no idea like where that would be or what the situation would be let me read you a couple of comments which have come okay. in to us from people who are watching. Um, this is a tweet from Fun Me. I cannot believe what I'm hearing on Victoria Live right now. Hertfordshire County Council say that this 30-year-old woman, an MS sufferer, might have to go into a care home because they can't provide care for her anymore. This is absolute madness. And we've had an anonymous text which says, Edith's story is shocking and heartbreaking, but it's also not uncommon. We have a social care system which has been driven into the ground by government cuts and disabled people are bearing the brunt. We should all be writing to our MP and supporting campaigns by organisations like the MS Society to support disabled people in this country and defend their right to an independent life. And I guess that's the point, isn't it? So often we're told by the government, by MPs, that they want to give people the opportunity to have an independent life. And that is something that you are leading very successfully at the moment. You're working full time, you're an accountant, you're living by yourself, but with the help of carers. Yeah. Would you be able to work if you go to a care home? I mean, I guess that comes down to where the care home would be. Yeah, and I don't know. And I, part of the difficulty I've had so far and the response I've had from my social worker is that I need to be more flexible with the times and then there'd be more availability for me. But I can't be that flexible because I do need to get up in the morning to go to work. Um, I don't want to go to bed at 6.30 as soon as I get home from work. Because that's the point, your yeah. carer is getting you and assisting you getting ready for bed. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of been put to me that I need to be more flexible and yet I'm encouraged like on the wider picture to be independent and go to work and I can't, can't do both. Freddie, I can see you're so frustrated just sitting here listening to Edith's story. Is there anything that you can do that you can help? I mean, clearly support, but I mean, what pressure can be applied here? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the MS Society is here for everyone with MS to provide support, information and advice. Um, but we are facing a national problem with social care funding and staff shortages. So it's really important that we keep the pressure up on the government and that's what we're doing. We're calling on them to deliver the urgent funding that's needed. There's a 2.5 billion gap next year alone uh, in social care funding. And of course we need a long term fix and that's what we're calling for too. Because we want to see a system where everyone with MS gets the right support that works around their lives. If people are working, then they need to have the support in the morning to get them up and get there to work um, and to live independently. What's the cut-off date for when your care ends at home? Um, it was today, and my current care agency have extended by one week. So now I've got a week. And then what? I don't know. Like, no one knows, it's not any it's not my care agency being difficult, it's not my social worker being difficult, there's just no one knows, like no one can magic carers out of the air. Thank you so much for coming in and best of luck. Do stay in touch with us and obviously we'll follow your story, but thank you so much for coming in. Thank you as well, Freddie.
Well, Hertfordshire County Council gave us this statement. Edith currently has care support provided as two visits per day at home. However, the care agency delivering this support recently served notice as they do not have any other people in need of support in the Hitchin area, so it has become unviable for them to travel from their work base. Edith has an allocated social worker from Hertfordshire County Council who has been working with her to try and find an alternative care agency who can meet her specific needs. Now it's been announced this morning that grammar schools in England will be able to access a share of 